Before we get to this episode, I want to ask you a quick question. Are you a woman who's 50 or older? And are you ready for a career or job change? Maybe you're yearning to do more meaningful work that really lights you up. I'm asking because my friends Dana and Wendy of Camp Reinvention have the coolest career program. It's called the Career Change Accelerator Program, and they coach amazing women in a 12-week program to reimagine what their careers might look like and to help them see new possibilities. Their very cool program is kicking off on October 27th. And if you even have an inkling, I might be ready for something new and different. I invite you to check out the details. There's a link in the show notes and let's get busy and think about new possibilities. One of the big lessons of the dragonflies to me was that it's never too late to soar. Flying over the water and you don't realize that she's later in her life cycle. She's so full of joy and beauty. So this idea that it's never too late is such an important message. And I I feel like even if you haven't been good at listening to yourself or your heart, it's never too late. It's never too late to try something new. Welcome to Reinvention Revels, stories of brave and unapologetic women, 50 to 90 years young, who have boldly reimagined life on their own terms to find new purpose and possibilities. I'm your host, Wendy Battles. Ready for a dose of inspiration? Let's get to it. Hey, Reinvention Revels. I'm really excited about today's episode. I can't wait to introduce you to my guest today. It just felt like this episode was really magical, like we had this deep connection. And I'll tell you more about the other Wendy. Today, you've got Wendy with a Y and Wendy with an I, and you'll get to hear our conversation. But before we get to the main event, I wanted to take a minute to share a review I received recently on Apple Podcasts from a listener, Sweet Vibe for You. And she said, I am really thankful I found this podcast. I've been feeling for years that being middle-aged didn't mean the end of the road, but the beginning of an even better journey of self-discovery and self-purpose. Being a mom and wife were wonderful. I wouldn't change those times for anything. The kids have graduated from college and are now gainfully employed. The marriage ran its course and I'm happily divorced. Now, it's time to get my groove back. And I can. I'm old enough to make informed decisions. I'm wise enough to productively participate with others. And I'm still young enough to live my dreams I set for myself. Wendy's podcast is inspirational. Her interviews are with real women who took the time to learn who they really were and then reinvented their lives in a more meaningful and fulfilling way at a point in time where some might think it's too late, as opposed to understanding the best has only begun. If you've been stuck in a rut with the belief that your dreams are unattainable due to your age, think again. I dare you to listen to two of the interviews and not find your motivation. Well, sweet vibe for you. Thank you so much for sharing that review. I really appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts. And I just want to say that I invite all of you, if you love the podcast, and I know I have many loyal listeners, to please take a couple of minutes, if you would, and write a review. And I say that not because I want you to think I'm so great, but really because my whole goal is to change the narrative about what it means for women to age in our society. So many times we hear all the negative things. This is such a place where I have the opportunity and the honor to illuminate and elevate these extraordinary women. So the more reviews I get, the higher I end up in the rankings, meaning the easier it is for 
women to find the podcast. And the idea really is that these are women that have boldly reinvented themselves. There are lots of women that want to do that, but they're not sure where to start. And this is a great way to get a little dose of inspiration to move you along that path of reinvention. So thank you in advance for taking a little time to rate and review. I really appreciate that. But without further ado, let's get into our episode today. And let me introduce you to my guest. Have you guys ever had a moment where you met someone and you didn't necessarily know them before, but you knew instantly you were kindred spirits? Well, that is my guest today, Wendy. So we have Wendy with an I and Wendy with a Y. I like to think we're sisters from another mister because we hit it off immediately. And I'm so excited for you to hear our conversation about reinvention. And I want to give you a little bit about her background before we start our conversation. Wendy Knox is an author, artist, and uplifter. Don't you love that uplifter? That's so awesome and juicy. In her past life, Wendy Knox was the only female senior vice president creative director at one of the largest advertising agencies in Los Angeles. Her award-winning commercials for brands like Honda and Acura were shot by the Academy Award-winning Coen Brothers and profiled in the New York Times. But Wendy longed for something more and unexpectedly found it in her own backyard during a life-changing experience with hundreds of red dragonflies. Learning that dragonflies grow their magical wings crawling in the muck at the bottom of a pond changed the way Wendy looked at her own muck and helped her rise up to find the gifts in her struggles. From losing her job at 50 to almost losing her only child to addiction. From there, Wendy's mission took flight to uplift and inspire women to transform their muck into magic and remind them that it's never too late to soar something she knows quite a bit about, having had her first book published and her first solo art show at 65 years young. With art, heart, and humor, she teaches the way of the dragonfly through her one-of-a-kind inspirational picture book, From Muck to Magic. Her uplifting blog, workshops, salons, intuitive coaching sessions, and creative speaking events. She has had the honor of being a regular contributor to Maria Schreiber's Architects of Change blog and was featured on Rita Wilson's Voice of Strength series on the Huffington Post. These days, you'll find Wendy writing, painting, and uplifting in magical Ojai, California, where she lives with her husband, Will, and fur baby Blossom. Wendy Knox, welcome to Reinvention Revels. It's great to be here. I love your voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm really glad you're here today, and I'm really excited about the conversation we're going to have about reinvention and some of the things that you're doing to uplift women. So I want to actually start by asking you a little bit about your own reinvention. I know that sometimes in life, we choose to reinvent ourselves. We consciously say, I'm ready for a change. I want to do something different with my life. And I make that happen. But sometimes, as you have experienced, we are forced into reinvention. We didn't necessarily see it coming, but it just happens to us. And we have to really sort of react and respond. Tell me about your own reinvention and the most important things you learned from that experience? Absolutely. So I had this big job. I was, like it said in my bio, the only female senior vice president creative director at one of the largest ad agencies in LA. I was kind of like Don Draper in Mad Men, yeah. and, um, but without the uh, martinis or the <laughs> It was the kind of job I dreamed about in my 20s, but the further I got up the corporate ladder, the less it felt like me. I felt like I was more involved in politics and 
sort of the the corporate life and less involved with the parts that I loved, which was the creativity and the nurturing of the people that worked for me. So I found myself wondering, is this all there is? is you know, but my job was so I was so successful. I was so blessed in so many ways with bonuses and a big salary. And I had uh, parents to help support and a husband who's an entrepreneur, which is French for no health plan. (laughs) I had a lot of responsibility, so I couldn't really choose to leave my job. But around 50, the choice was made for me. They said that we were losing a lot of money, clients were leaving, and they were going to let me go. But that's what they said. It felt more like ageism and sexism because I did a lot of car advertising for clients who were rather male oriented. And I had actually been told to let my male partner do more of the talking. And so I felt like I had outgrown that job. But when I lost it, I was devastated and shocked. And, you know, it's a very young person's business. There aren't a lot of jobs at the top. So it was scary. And I had a little boy and, you know, like I said, the entrepreneurial husband, the parents that needed help. So I just found myself sitting in my backyard one day, sobbing, sobbing and sobbing, you know, and asking the universe for help, you know, please give me a sign. Am I too old to reinvent myself? Because in advertising, 50 is old, you know, not every, but especially then. So I asked for a sign, am I too old to reinvent myself? And I went for a walk with my dog and I came home and I did not expect this kind of a sign. I found hundreds of red dragonflies all over our backyard, whirling and twirling over our outdoor umbrella, like like a dragonfly ballet. It was the most magical thing I had ever seen. I had never seen a red dragonfly. I'd never seen dragonflies in our backyard. And I just, I didn't know what to make of it. They stayed for four hours the first day and they came back three more days. So Wow. So you took that as a sign that that meant something. It was a sign. At first, I thought it was a sign that I was losing my mind. And I went and I got my neighbor, Julie, who's she was a lawyer at the time and much more logical than me. I said, Julie, am I imagining things or are you seeing what I'm seeing? And she was. So I started doing what any sane person would do. And I started Googling dragonflies like crazy. And When I did, I discovered something I'd never heard of before. Dragonflies spend most of their lives crawling in the muck at the bottom of a pond. They stay down there for up to four years. No wings, no wings, no colors. They just look like plain generic brown bugs just crawling around down there. And what we can't see is that while they're in the muck, they're shedding old versions of themselves and growing new ones up to 15 times over four years. And then one seemingly random day, the dragonfly crawls out of the muck onto a rock or reed and has its first moment in the sun. And as she breathes in the fresh air, her wings unfurl and she flies. So the whole time she was in the muck, she was growing her magical wings. And I believe the message for me was, it's never too late to soar. Dragonflies don't even get their magical wings or take off until later in life. And I just started sobbing again because it was so beautiful. And so mystical and magical to ask for a sign and get one like that. And, you know, that really made me feel like I wasn't so alone and everything was going to be okay. But that was just the beginning. Everywhere I went, I started seeing dragonflies. It was crazy. I saw them. I I lived in LA. I saw them on every freeway. Dragonflies would fly by my windshield on the freeway, on the 405, on the 10, on the 101. I saw them on Hollywood Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard. One day, 
I was walking in Beverly Hills on the way to the dentist on Rodeo Drive, and there was a big fat red dragonfly right there. Like, what was it doing? Going shopping? You know, I I couldn't believe it. They found me everywhere. And then sort of the dragonfly coup de gras was I was um, in Ojai, which is where we live now. And it's this beautiful little small magical town outside of LA. And I was at a resort and we were walking across the lawn to go to lunch. And there was another swarm of red dragonflies. And I said to my husband, okay, there's something on here. I think those dragonflies know that I'm a writer and a brand specialist. And I think they want me to get their story out into the world and tell people that they grow their magic in the muck. And so can we. And now that has become my mission. That is what I'm doing is I'm writing and painting and speaking and helping other women turn their muck into magic. And, you know, I believe that We can't always change the outside world, but we can change the way we look at it. So the dragonflies have helped me through many times in my life now, from losing my job to almost losing my child to addiction. They've helped me see that during these times of fear and worry and transition and reinvention and doubt, that in that muck, magic is growing in our struggles we're receiving gifts. And that way of looking at life has changed so much. And now I'm grateful for losing my job. And I'm grateful to have the dragonflies as a reminder of the magic that's on the other side of our muck. I love that. I I totally agree with you that I think there are so many magical parts of life. And I know that especially these days, there's, there's so much fear about so many different things. And I totally understand that. And it's easy to get sometimes gripped by the fear. You look at the news on so many different levels, and there's so many things that feel unsettling and scary. But at the same time, on the other side, to your point, we can create this whole world for ourselves where we can begin to change ourselves. Like I can't control what goes on in, on so many levels, but I can control what I do. And that's what I hear you saying is that, that this was an amazing opportunity for you to say, oh, I can change myself and I can use these signs that I'm getting to help not only change my life, but other people's lives. Yes. And, you know, some of the magic that has grown out of my own muck is I've always been a very sensitive person and very intuitive, but I didn't always trust it. But having more time in nature with less structure has helped me sort of listen to those inner voices within and to develop my own intuitive abilities. And so now I've found myself helping women who are stuck in their own muck, helping them find the magic in there. And It's been so exciting to not just transform my own life, but to help other people see theirs differently. Because I believe, I always say, if you can see it, you can be it. So if you see things differently, different things will happen. And I've learned so much from the dragonflies. It sounds so crazy, but I often say my life coach is a dragonfly because You know, when we're in the muck, when we're going through our fear and our worry, we want to flip a switch or read a self-help book or have a couple of sessions with a therapist and get out of the muck. Yeah, right. But what I've learned is we need to accept the muck. And I always say be one with the muck because we'll find nourishment and little gems down there and gifts. You know, the only way to heal is to allow ourselves to feel. And if we believe that we're growing something magical or something expansive while we're down there, it helps us trust the process and allow things to unfold. Yeah. And and I think that that's something interesting you just said, allowing things to unfold, because I know I like to control things. Like I like to, you know, not other people, but like the out, like I want something to happen. I want it to happen now in this way. And I have this idea sometimes 
where I want to kind of, not that I set out to say, you know, Wendy, I really want to control things today, but that basically is what's going on. And there's something to be said for learning the ability to allow and to surrender. And I think that's hard for women because I think for so long we, you know, because we're in charge of so many different things, because we are the caregivers, the, you know, you name it, as you just mentioned before, doing multiple things. I feel like sometimes I need to kind of control things to kind of make it all fit together and happen. But this idea of reinventing ourselves and using our intuition and kind of letting go to help guide us, that's very different, I think, for a lot of women. It's not what they're used to. It is. It is hard to get used to, but that's why in a way being thrust into that situation was a blessing. Like you said in the beginning, I don't, I wouldn't have chosen like, okay, I want to lose my job at 50. You know? Yeah, wait. If I was going to choose it, I would have been able to plan things and figure things out and try to control things in a certain way. But there were a lot of gifts in it. And I have what I've developed that I call dragonflying lessons, things that I've learned as I've done more research into dragonflies. And like I said, they shed their old skin and grow new skin constantly. And I believe that that's kind of what we need to do when we're in our periods of muck, whether it's shedding all the stuff that's in piles on your desk, which I'm not very good at, or shedding old ideas about ourselves or should is what is and could is and you know the rule books and the stories we tell ourselves like I had a story a way of seeing myself I was I used to call when I went to work with this big position I'd call myself execute woman it was like I stepped into a phone booth and turned into execute woman and had this role to play so Even though that wasn't really who I was, I had to let go of that to discover who I really was. And one of the dragon flying lessons that I like is let go, let magic. When we let go of our ideas about things and the rigidity with which we think things are supposed to happen, like I decide I want to change careers and I'm going to do this step, this step, this step. Well, The universe had a different idea for me. And look at the gift that came, though. So sometimes I feel that the universe or God or whatever you want to call it has something bigger and more beautiful in store for us than we could have imagined. I mean, yes, having a bug inspire you and become part of your mission is kind of cray cray. And yet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yet here you are. It's been and, amazing. You know, it inspired yeah. me to write a book, to do paintings, to give speeches, to talk to people like you and touch other people's hearts. I mean, the universe has bigger things in store or more unexpected things than we could have planned for ourselves. Yeah. And, and I do think that that's so true because I've experienced that many times in my own life. And something unfortunate happens or we don't plan, you know, we don't expect it to happen as you're talking about with your job. It always ends up for me that those things that seem so terrible in the moment when they happen that, you know, have me boohooing that those ugly cries where you just are like almost inconsolable. So you kind of get it out and then you realize, okay, well, you know what, look, I have to go on. And ultimately I have learned in just about every experience, it always works out for the best always everything that seemed like a big obstacle or roadblock I feel like was part of this greater plan and to your point I needed to open my mind understand that there's a lot of different ways to get to the same place right to get to that goal that we might have we can get there many different ways but because I often want to just get there the way I want to get there (laughs) and the universe is like um Wendy excuse me that's not exactly how it's going to go so I think you're right on though about this idea of your intuition. And I feel like a lot of women, there's a lot of women who are totally in tune with their intuition, but I think there are other women that maybe are less so. So this idea of feeling like you're not alone, that you have the ability to change your circumstances. Do you have any suggestions for how our listeners can begin to tap into their intuition a bit more and kind of trust those ideas they're getting or that wisdom that bubbles up? Yes, I do. I have a few things that I do. For one thing, 
is to set aside your to-do list every day and spend a little time to be instead of to do, to be. And being is allowing yourself the time and the space, even if it's just to breathe. And it's hard for us with the computers, with social media, with everything, but I really believe it's so important. I believe that nature is one of the best ways to nourish ourselves and to open ourselves up to receive information. I feel like we're all these radio stations and there's all these messages being transmitted, but it gets really noisy and really a lot of you know stations talking at one time. So when you go out to nature, I'm really lucky where I live. I've been big, beautiful garden and a lot of trees and grass. But I think everybody can find a little park or a little slice of, you know, a tree. When I used to walk, live somewhere, there were trees where I'd walk. And I know it sounds really crazy, but I would sometimes just sit against a tree or literally hug a tree. And I feel like trees are one of us, our greatest teachers because they're grounded, their roots go deep into Mother Earth and their branches reach up to the heavens. And I feel like in order for us to receive higher wisdom and higher knowledge, we also need to be grounded in the earth and reach up and be open. So that, just something like that, or another thing, it's all about oddly enough to receive higher wisdom and messages, I believe. A lot of it has to do with getting grounded. Mm, yes. And so, so you become a container to receive. And a really great way to do that is to lie on the ground, on grass, whatever. And I do this thing called pledging allegiance to my heart. And it's just so simple. But I feel like, you know, our brains are talking all the time. Our minds are like these really complicated computer spewing thoughts and beliefs and criticisms and judgments all day long. But I believe it's the voice of our hearts that contains the wisdom and the intuitive voice, but it speaks in a whisper. Yes. We need to get really, really quiet to listen. So one of the things I do is I lie on the grass, I put my hand on my heart, and I just take some deep breaths into my heart like breathing through your nose, breathing out your mouth. And just sometimes I envision like a pink light at my heart. And then I speak to my heart like I'm speaking to a small child or a dog or a friend. And I just say, what do you need from me right now? And, you know, we're always trying to figure out what everyone else needs, what my boss needs, what my husband needs, what my kid needs, what my dog needs. It's very about us that we ask ourselves. Yeah. So by pledging allegiance to your heart, it's almost like opening up the door and rolling out a welcome mat that says, okay, I'm here and I'm going to listen to you. And I've done this like, you know, when my mind is really busy and I've got deadlines or whatever, I stop and I go, what do you need from me right now? And like, sometimes the answer is to wander. So on that day, I'll go for a walk. And instead of counting how many steps I've taken, I breathe and I look around and I notice how many shades of green there are or what that bird's song is or, you know, just what the wind feels like on the back of my neck, like really being aware and opening myself yeah. to something greater than me. And just that little voice, that little voice one day. I was walking by an art store. This was when I had my big execu woman job and I had a kid and I just was so stressed out. But that little voice of my heart said, go over there. And when I did, I noticed there was a, a flyer for an art class called Art and Spirit. And I'd always had this vision of myself as an older woman painting. And but in that moment, I saw that flyer and my heart said, take that class. And my brain said, are you kidding? You're working so many hours. You don't even have time to do. But I listened to my heart. 
Yeah. And it changed everything. I ended up, you know, doing all these paintings for my book and doing paintings for my speeches and and doing paintings just for the joy of, you know, not using your brain and just playing with colors and being like a child. So I feel like the voice of our intuition lives in our hearts. So we just need to honor that voice and create space for it. I couldn't agree with you more. I think that is so true that we need to kind of get to know ourselves better. And because it feels like what we're talking about is really strengthening the relationship with ourselves. Absolutely. That's a great way to put it. Right. That we are worth it. And I heard you say, well, we we do so much for other people. We tend to, and I know this is true for so many of us as women, we always are like, well, I'll get to myself after I help everybody else. And then yeah. there's not a lot left. But if we can make ourselves more of a priority, if we can de- de- develop this relationship with ourselves, it's easier to tune into our heart, to listen to that intuition, to really trust it, to, to your point of trusting, to trust it. Because I heard you say, well, you know, I, I felt it in my heart. But at the same time, my head was like, well, no, don't do that. So and I think that's what happens often, right? Our logical self wants to take over. But if we can strengthen that muscle of trusting ourselves, that, that we have this amazing wisdom inside. Absolutely. Thinking, right? It never steers us wrong. And I was thinking about that because when you said it's like a little whisper, that's exactly the story that I tell, that I that Reinvention Rebels came to be this podcast because one day in my quest to be more quiet and still, to your point exactly, that when we get more quiet and still, we can hear the voice, right? This wisdom that's always there, but we're often so busy, we just can't hear it. And I heard the tiniest whisper, Mm. reinvention rebels. And I was like, reinvention, what? Like reinvention rebels. And I thought, well, I don't know what in the world that would be. I don't even, you know, I just, I have no idea, but I just really, but something about it struck me and I just wrote it down. I just listened to it and I wrote it down. And, you know, over time and just being more quiet, it came to me that it was a podcast, right? To really tell the stories about women that have already reinvented themselves in order to inspire others. Just sort of very similar to your idea of uplifting and inspiring. I always think of illuminating and elevating amazing women, right? So so to, to help light the way for other women that are thinking, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could have my own reinvention when I hear what Wendy's done or what my other guests has done. It can be the inspiration that I need. So I think you're so right. You never know who is going to be your dragonfly. You know, who is going to give you a sign or a symbol or help you open your mind or your heart to something else. So I think that's great that you're doing this and providing this inspiration for women at this time in our lives. And I think we all need it too. I I always feel like there can never be too much inspiration, that I can always be inspired by so many different people that, you know, any opportunity I can get to hear what someone's doing or share in something that they they've said that write something down that inspires me that I can go back and look at. Because, you know, we all have those down days when everything is not all rosy and, you know, maybe we're not in the highest, what in Buddhism we call like life condition. That's sometimes when I most need that inspiration. So, oh, I read Wendy's book and, oh, you know, on page whatever, I I read this passage that I wrote down. Let me go look at that and get some inspiration from that today because today I need that. Absolutely. There's been times when I've needed to look at my book to remember. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, amazing listeners. Want to have Reinvention Rebels inspiration delivered to your inbox? Head over to reinventionrebels.com and sign up for my news and notes. You've used this metaphor of dragonflies. Where do you see yourself going in the future? Do you see yourself reinventing yourself some more? Or how, how do you see things unfolding for you? Because you're now 66? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm really, well, one of the things I'm, one of my uh, aspirations is to be ageless and cageless, because I do have, from my career of this climbing up the corporate ladder and, you know, doing this commercial and winning this award, I had a lot of drive for a certain kind of accomplishment. 
And in this world that I'm in now, I'm winging it, <laughs> you know, pun intended. Right. I don't really have a playbook. One of the goals I had was to get a book published and have a um, an art show featuring the art for my book. And that happened when I was 65. So now I'm kind of in this in-between time. And to be honest, I've had some more muck of you're this age. Why aren't you doing this? You should be doing that. All these voices in my head. And I've had to like kind of use the remote control clicker and, you know, put them on mute and spend more time asking my heart, what brings you joy? You know, for so long, I lived a life of shoulds and have tos and and yes, I know just what you mean. Fitting in everything into my calendar. And now at this point in my life, I'm asking, what brings you joy? And what would bring others joy? And I really love, I love helping people transform their muck into magic. And I love sharing like we're sharing and connecting and lifting people up. And so I'm developing a workbook to go with my book, which I'm and a workshop called uh, Creating Magic Out of Muck. And it's going to involve writing and process oriented art. You won't have to be an artist, but just using art and writing and talking and intuition and nature and all different things to kind of go into the muck to find our magic. And I'm not exactly sure what form that's going to take, but I'm asking the dragonflies in the universe to help me see what develops. I love that. And part of what I hear you saying in that is that we don't have to have it all figured out. I know that sometimes, even from when we're younger, it, you know, you're young, there are people are already asking you, well, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be one day? So we're, I think we're often in this mindset of feeling like we need to figure things out. But I also feel like as we age, there is this new sense of freedom. And you even said it when you said like ageless and cageless, which yeah. makes me like, I don't want to be all bound up by what society is telling me or my family is telling me or anybody is telling me, I want to do what I want to do. So I feel like it's this wonderful opportunity when we, sometimes we don't know what that path is. We aren't clear or we have some inklings, but it's not all crystal clear and set in stone where maybe the rest of our life has been or part of our life in the past. But I think if we can kind of be in that I have some ideas, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. And I'm open to exploring it. That there could be, you know, it could really be something there for us to uncover that magic that you talk about. Absolutely. The not knowing is, it's difficult for, in our society, like you said, we feel like we should have the answers, but I feel like, Again, back to the dragonfly, that time in the muck where it's growing its wings, it's not thinking, is this, are these going to be nice wings? Are they going to be blue wings? Are they going to be, you know, it's like evolving. And what they do when they're in the muck, they feed themselves a lot. Like you wouldn't believe it. Dragonflies are like this eating machine. They eat like 10 times their weight. It's like a Las Vegas, all you can eat buffet in the muck. And I feel like during these times of not knowing, it's important for us to feed ourselves. You know, I'm not talking about Hagen Dazs, but of course, <laughs> our souls, watching things that inspire us, being with people who inspire us. Every day I take time to breathe and to meditate. And to ask, I ask my guides or whoever you believe in, show me what I'm to do. Or I'll ask, give me a sign that I'm on the right track. I created this altar in my office and it says, let the magic fly. Because one of my intentions is to fly this message out into the world that in the muck, you're growing your magic. I feel like it's so important to offer that hope and encouragement, especially at a time when there's so much muck. But I don't know how. And it's the how that our brains are constantly drumming. Well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? And I have to tell my brain to just take a vacation, you know, and to set an intention to ask Show me how I can uplift and inspire people. Show me, uh, help me find ways to bring my message out into the world. And then like magic, I'll see 
I was featured on this blog, Girls Gone 50, and I looked at who liked my post and I saw the name Reinvention Rebel and I wrote to you, you know, something told me and I didn't know that we were going to connect like we have or anything, but I just followed that sign yes. and on following the sign, create a class. A lot of people said, you should create a class. You should just, I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to see what unfolds and I it's love exciting that. and it's scary, but uh, to me, the question mark of it and the possibilities are much more fun than a life that I had where everything was all spelled out. And I'm also lucky, like I still do consulting and advertising to pay bills. So I'm allowed, I allow myself more freedom to have this develop as sort of the work of my heart and soul. Yes. I know that. I feel the same way about the podcast. This is my heart centered project. This is what I'm so passionate about. I mean, and I like my day job, but I love this. I love this idea. And I I heard you mention joy. I heard you mention fun. I heard you mention possibility, being open, all those things that as we age, because I think that when we're aging often, and obviously there are so many, there's so many messages that women get in our society, even when we're younger. But, it's, but, you know, when we obviously, as we get older, where we're less valued, where people tell us that we don't matter, where there's so much ageism and for women is all about how we look, that that's where our value comes from. It takes a lot sometimes to, to change our thinking, like right? to be able to oh, say, yeah. I want to have more joy and fun and create more possibilities. That's sometimes taking a big leap of faith, right? To kind of put yourself out there when people sometimes will tell us, oh, I don't know if you should do that or, you know, so I, I like that idea of just taking some baby steps, you know, surrounding yourself with other people that can inspire you as just some ways that we can, you know, sometimes just take baby steps in that direction of reinvention. Well, you know, you're right about the messages. When I was at the ad agency, I had this had this great guy who was my partner, but it was my 50th birthday. And he said to me, well, you're not going to tell people, are you? Like turning 50 was something I should be ashamed of. I mean, you know, it's a privilege, really. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. Exactly. But it was hard. I mean, advertising is a business where they used, I remember when I was really young in it, and there was this really talented woman who was probably 40, and people said she was a hack. She had won every award. She was brilliant. But because she was a certain age, she was diminished. But what I have found is, you know, again, it's an inside job. I feel that if we see our value in our worth, and if we give ourselves opportunities, if we see ourselves and hear ourselves and honor ourselves, I believe we get more of that from the outside world. And it's not easy. Something I do, I like to create ceremonies. So like I will create I'll write down all these beliefs that are running around in my head. Like I want to create this. Oh, aren't you a little old to do that? And who cares about you anyway? Or all those awful thoughts that I say my inner critic is Edna. You know, I give her a name and Edna just, she just spews things at me that I would never say to to another human being. But I write those things down and then I have a ceremony where I burn them and I take the ashes of all those thoughts and all those poisonous beliefs and like I'll plant them in the ground and plant a flower. So I'm growing something new, full of possibilities that can blossom out of the old stories. Because I believe we need to let go of our old stories and our old ideas of ourselves in order to grow our wings. What a great idea, too, to kind of take that. Because I know that happens to all of us, I think, certainly myself, where my mind can be very busy. And I can sometimes go down that path of, you know, uncertainty, or whatever those thoughts are. So I love that idea of taking those things and burying them or burning them or something that kind of says, okay, I acknowledge that I have them, but at yes. the same time, I'm letting them go to create the space for this, these new possibilities. 
Absolutely. That is a great idea, Wendy. I love it. I love it. You turn that into a workshop or something like that. You know, yeah, that's going to be part of it. That's the type of thing that I want to do. You know, I can't fit. I don't know yet if it'll be in person at a retreat online. You know, we'll see what happens. That's the how. And I exactly I down the volume on the how. Right. And I think that's where, again, where it comes down to like trust. We have to trust ourselves. We have to trust that we we have all the answers. Perhaps the answers have not been revealed to us yet, but they are all there and that we have the ability to tap into that wisdom through this idea of just getting more quiet, getting more still. And that we are, I just think that we are so powerful as women to chart our own course, to be more confident, to believe in ourselves more. But sometimes we just have to work on it a bit to kind of get there, right? Which is part of what you're talking about, working through this muck. Yes. And it helps to have a good therapist too. <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. It makes all the difference. All the tools you can find. Exactly. Exactly. Are there any final thoughts or bits of wisdom you might want to share with those that are listening to our episode today? Well, one of the big lessons of the dragonflies to me was that it's never too late to soar. Flying over the water and you don't realize that she's later in her life cycle. She's so full of joy and beauty. So this idea that it's never too late is such an important message. And I, I feel like even if you haven't been good at listening to yourself or your heart, it's never too late. It's never too late to try something new. My mom was always very, very creative, but she had no confidence in herself. And since I was a little girl, I was always kind of her therapist. Mom, you can do this. But she just had so many self-doubts. And it was so interesting. At 81 years old, she was living in a, in a nursing home. She had a lot of physical problems. And they wanted her to take an art class. And she said, no, no, I don't want to. You know, she was so such a perfectionist. She didn't think she'd be good enough. Finally, this really lovely woman got her into this art class. And she started making art. And would you believe my mother had her first art show at 81 years old and she went on to have three more and she became known as the artist at this nursing home. And it was the most beautiful thing. And what I realized was all that time that I'd been trying, mom, you're so creative, you should do something. She was in her own muck and we don't know when that moment is that we or someone else is going to step out. And it was a big lesson and it was very reassuring to me that we all grow our own wings in our own time. You know, your mom at 81 doing her first art show is like, what? If your mom could do that at 81. Right. What can't any of us do at 50 something, 60 something, 70 something? It really doesn't matter. I feel like there are always endless possibilities if we're open to it. Not if we think we can't and we're like, well, I'm done. But if we're open to what might exist, even if I don't know what it is yet. And can I just put in a plug for my book? Surely. <laughs> That's my last thing. I'm the goddess of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> but one of the things that grew out of my muck was this book. I wanted to share the story of what happened to me and the story of the dragonfly's transformation from up to magic. But, you know, being in advertising, I know how many gazillions of messages people are bombarded with. So I, and I found myself in more muck. Like after I'd lost my job and was trying to reinvent myself, I also, my son went through a lot of problems with addiction. So it was a very difficult time for me and I just couldn't figure out. I wanted to share this story, but I just didn't know how. So I allowed myself a lot of time and space, but I asked spirit, I said a prayer and I said, show me how I can share this in a way that it'll touch people's hearts. And for the longest time, nothing happened. And then one day it's like there was a whisper in my ear and I went to the computer and the words to this poem just came out like magic. I don't even know where they came from. And I'll just tell you the beginning. It said, have you ever been stuck? So stuck in the muck with the yuck and the guck 
that you thought, what the muck? And I it's, what? It's, it's almost like Dr. Seuss for adults. Yes. So this whole poem unfurled. And then I would meditate and I'd ask, how do I paint muck? How do I show fear? How do I show self-love? And I received paintings. They kind of came to me without an outline. It was the, the exact opposite of my job with all its structure. It's just they kind of came through me. And I was really blessed. I did this book and I, I got a wonderful publisher. And and before the pandemic, I was going to all different bookstores and women's organizations, you know, talking about my book and the message of it and my story. But now you can find it on my website, which is uh, wendynox.com, Wendy with an I, W-E-N-D-I, Knox.com, or on Amazon. And it's when, it's called From Muck to Magic. And it's just, it's like holding a children's book in your hands, but it's for adults. And some people tell me they use it as a meditation to give them support and to make them feel comfy and reassured during times of change and struggles. So well, you're certainly living through those times today. So <laughs> that sounds really awesome. I'm going to have to check it out myself. I love this idea of muck to magic and just the story about how it just kind of came through you which to me again speaks to this idea of just being open surrendering and allowing absolutely it, surrendering and for a while i beat myself up like, what's wrong with you that happened to you a long time ago why haven't you done anything mm -hmm. with it but it just just like my mom it wasn't the time exactly and exactly yeah that's I why i love being in nature because the leaves turn when they're ready to turn new blossoms open when they're ready to blossom and if we get more connected to nature i think we'll have more trust of our own nature yeah i think you're right about that because i do feel the same way i moved from the city to just outside the city in a suburb where it's much more quiet which took a little getting used to but it has unleashed my creativity in so many amazing ways that I just didn't have when I felt like I was just too busy running around being a city person. We're now just being calmer, more quiet, going out in the woods to hike. Oh, um, yeah. Is, to me, like the best thing ever. Plus, I think with the pandemic and just being less mobile, that's also added to the opportunity to kind of rediscover myself. And I just feel like that's amazing. But if we're open to what might exist, even if I don't know what it is yet. Well, and I feel like it's so much how we look at it. You know, when we moved to this beautiful small town, people said, oh, are you moving there to retire? I said, no, I'm actually just getting started. You know, I feel like this is my new life. And I, and I do want to say for listeners of yours who are living in cities and are, you know, aren't able to get out into nature as easily as we are, there are things we can do, you know, like when I worked at my job, I would just put a flower in a vase or in a bowl and meditate on the beauty of that, you know, just picking some leaves. I mean, there are things we can do to bring nature into us if we can't always get out there. Envisioning looking out and seeing a picture of a mountain to feel its strength or watching a dragonfly or a butterfly. You know, there are ways to expand the way we look at things, even if you can't go spend a day in the woods. So because our minds can take us so many places. Exactly. Exactly. Endless possibilities. I will make sure that uh, all the details about where to find you and your book are in our show notes so our listeners can Thank easily you. connect to you uh, as they like and reach out and learn more about all the cool things that you're doing, Wendy. I can't thank you enough for spending time with me today and having oh. this awesome conversation. I'm just so excited. Well, one, I'm just excited that we connected, that, you know, and there's another Ooh. Wendy in the world. <laughs> I, know, cool a, I love that at, across the country we could meet somebody and feel like we've known them you know it's just really magical oh I do 
So this other part of my brain is activating and saying, tell Wendy's listeners that they can get my book for 20% off. That's a gift I'm offering. And also, if you go to my website, I have a PDF that's illustrated with my paintings and has five dragon flying lessons. And it's it's something nice to uplift yourself with. So I also want to offer that. To your listeners and gratitude to you and all this illumination and elevation you're bringing to the world. Right? I love it. I love it. I think we're just living our missions out in the world. And I love that we can, that I'm like, oh, I know someone so cool that we can now be connected. <laughs> and, you know, thanks to you finding me and, and, and look at what happened. We had this great conversation. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. And I hope I'm that glad you- I my heart, my mind was saying, oh, don't be a pest. Don't do that. But then my heart said, no, you got to reach out to this Wendy. So yeah. really happy I did. Yeah, me too. That's like a powerful lesson. Yeah. Um, trusting our gut, going for it, even if it's telling us, oh, that seems weird. Don't do that. And you're like, but you know what? I feel it in my heart or I feel right. it in my soul. That's always the sign that we Absolutely. should feel the fear and do it anyway. And look what happened. Absolutely. I love that book. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, amazing listener. Did you love today's episode? Did you find inspiration you can apply to your own life? I'd love for you to take a moment to rate and review the Reinvention Rebels podcast on your favorite platform. That would be awesome, and I would be so appreciative. Let's help spread the word to more people and get them inspired. Hey, Rebel. If this episode inspired you to think about what's possible in your life, I'll share a little secret. Any of us can reinvent ourselves no matter where we are in our lives, any age, any stage. We just have to decide to get started. Here's a super simple way for you to get going with your reinvention dreams. Download my audio, five questions to spark your curiosity and inspire your reinvention journey. I share five key questions that will spur your thinking help you uncover your dreams, and motivate you to take action. Because if not now, when? Details in the show notes. Let's get inspired together.